who would like to um, register for that, they can do that on the website or on forms found at area businesses around town. Very cool. And you have a Facebook page about that as well, am I correct? Correct. There's a lot of information. Um, I'm updating our Eco Park Facebook page quite frequently. And right now we're um, letting people know about the folks that are sponsoring the River to Ridge um, Eco Family Fun Run. And there are also links to the event where people can join the event or they can also invite friends to it. And then it also gives links to the registration online. Yeah, sounds like a great event. I know I'm going to definitely be doing it. So great. Um, sign up anywhere you guys can. Um, so. There's a lot of really cool things going on at the Eco Park right now. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what's happening with sure. the Playscapes? Definitely. So we have our Playscapes, and there are four, um, four main areas of the Playscapes. We have our Wild Water, Forest Scramble, Prairie Mystery, and also the Farm Play. And each one of those uh, Playscapes has the first phase of each one completed. And children can play on all of them right now except for the Forest Scramble, but it will be open this summer and they will continue to grow and we will have our grand opening hopefully in 2014 as funding becomes available. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for kids, everyone can enjoy it. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's not just about getting kids and families and nature, it's for everyone to get outside and mm -hmm. get active. Right, and I know that's part of um, the mission statement of the Eco Park is to just get everybody involved with a sustainable, healthy right. lifestyle. So do you think that's been um, kind of happening the way you guys want it to in the community? I mean, are you guys getting a lot of publicity? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's an ongoing process. We're coming up with new events and new opportunities. For example, um, we have expanded into more adult programming. In years past, we have always had our children's programming, which includes the schools that bring the kids for the field trips that really get kids out into nature. Now with our adult pro programming, we have Ecofilm, Eco Mind, um, Eco Walk, and also Eco Belly. In fact, the first Eco Belly is going to be happening at Earth Fair, which is put on by Cooley Partners for Sustainability. It will be held at the Eco Park on Earth Day on April 22nd this year. And so the Eco Belly, which is a partnership with other area organizations and businesses, will be at that event as well. Very cool. So um, just a last thing, how can us students here at UWL get involved? Great. Um, so like we had talked about, there's multiple events going on, and we always need volunteers to really make these events happen successfully. Um, in fact, we had over 100 student volunteers for Enchanted Forest last fall, and we need volunteers for the upcoming River to Ridge Eco Family Fun Run. And we always need volunteers going on um, throughout the year. For example, we have our outdoor adventure day camps coming up this summer for any students that will still be in town. And then during the spring, winter, and sometimes during the fall, we also have um, the nature education programs for the school students that come in. And we also need volunteer naturalists for that. So if anybody's interested in any of those um, volunteer opportunities, they can contact us. Yep. If they wanted to contact us, they could go on the website as well. Yep. And that is www.mhecopark.org. And that has been Michelle Jerome from the Eco Park. I'm Sarah Swartz. Thanks for tuning in. This is Vienna, a brown medium haired two year old cat. She loves attention and is very friendly and affectionate. Here is Trinket, a six week old black and white kitten. She is very fun and playful and would love to live in an active home. This is Skip, a two-year-old border collie, is very sweet and knows how to sit. She is good with other dogs and would love to learn more tricks. Scooter is a seven-year-old Cocker Spaniel Australian Shepherd. He is a very social and happy dog. Scooter enjoys getting attention and playing outside. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. The UWL softball team split their doubleheader last Friday against the Yellow Jackets of UW-Superior. 
The Eagles came out strong, winning their first game 2-0. to Lauren Bears captured the win on the mound. Bears had a perfect game through six innings until she gave up a bunt single. Bears went seven innings, giving up two hits while striking out seven. UWL produced both runs on a pair of sacrifice flies from Lindsay Sheehan and Lacey Probst. In the second matchup of the day, the Eagles fell short, losing to Superior 6-5. to Superior came out strong, scoring one run in the top of the first inning, but the Eagles responded in the bottom half of the inning, scoring two runs on three hits. The Eagles then made it a 3-1 game, a 3-1 game in the third as pinch runner Kirsten Gozer stole home on a double steal attempt. The Yellow Jackets bat started to heat up as the Eagles quickly fell behind after giving up three runs in the fourth followed by two runs in the fifth off an Ashley Olsen RBI double and a Kayla Bloom RBI single. The Eagles were able to cut down the lead in the bottom of the sixth when Kelly Anderson hit a solo home run and in the seventh as Fleshman had a sacrifice fly to knock in pinch runner Allison Hennessy. It just wasn't enough to catch up to the Yellow Jackets. Probst suffered her first loss of the season, going three innings, allowing four hits and four runs. Katie Fink was 2 of 4 for the day. UWL is 16 and 5 overall and 1 on 1 in the WIAC Conference. The Lady Eagles will be back on the Diamond today, hosting UW Platteville. Staying on the diamond, but moving on to the lacrosse men's baseball team, who had a very successful weekend as they earned a doubleheader sweep over the 13th-ranked UW Stevens Point last Friday afternoon. In the first matchup, lacrosse took a 2-0 lead in the top of the second inning as Brett Jacobson hit an RBA single and Garrett Novinsky scored on a balk. The pointers Jimmy Cody responded in the bottom of the inning with a solo home run and then took the lead with a pair of runs in the bottom of the fifth off a Ryan Schittler two-run single. UWL took back the lead in the eighth inning, scoring two unearned runs. Cole Cephalou tied the game, scoring on a pass ball, and pinch runner Connor Crone scored on a wild pitch. UW Stevens Point wasn't ready to give up as they tied the game in the bottom of the ninth. Schittler hit a two-out RBI single and take the game into extra innings. In the top of the tenth inning, the Eagles were able to round up a pair of runs, which would seal the victory. In the second game of the doubleheader, the Eagles' bats led, the vi led them to victory. They were able to take a 3-0 lead in the top of the second inning and then continued adding on with solo runs in the fourth, fifth, and seventh inning. The Eagles captured the victory, winning 6-5. Tim Larson earned the victory on the mound, only allowing six, hit six hits and five runs. The Eagles will return to the field on Saturday, hosting UW Oshkosh. Moving on, the UWL tra women's track team placed second at the Warford College this past weekend. The Eagles finished with a total of 137 points, while first place Warford finished with 289. UWL's 4x400 meter relay of Caitlin Whipperman, Jenna Halverson, Rebecca Schuerman, and Claire Elliott placed first. The Eagles' 4x100 meter relay of Jamie Ludwig Ludwigson, Halverson, Whipperman, and Elliott finished second. In the field events, Kayla Ashen tied for second in the high jump, while Summer Teets finished second in the pole vault, Bailey Ashton second in the long jump, and Nicole Flackey second in the hammer throw. Bailey Sauerwein was fifth in the shot put. UWL will return to action this Saturday at the UW Platteville Invitation. And that's all for this week's sports. A lot happening in sports this week. Very, very busy weekend in sports. Yeah, very just busy. a note about the research and creativity thing. Um, tomorrow we have two of WMCN's own, Ryan Nell and Sean Mobley will be oh, presenting. Oh, awesome. um, Ryan's doing a poster presentation in session A at okay. 9 a.m. in Valhalla and Sean is doing an oral pre presentation at 8.30 in room 326 so make sure to check that out. Definitely well good luck guys. Yeah, yeah a lot of interesting sure, yeah. research happening That's very nice. at UWL. Um, really cool. Well, thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review. Make sure to join us next week, Thursday, at 4.30, right here on Campus Channel 6, Charter Channel 96, and Digital Cable Channel 989. Orchestral.